Um, this game was played in Winnipeg in um, uh, the beginning of the year 2002. Uh, in the last round of the Canadian Junior Championship, this was the last, well, the first and last Canadian Junior Championship I ever played, and um, the beginning of the tournament was quite good for me. I started at three out of four, but then I just completely collapsed and I. Um, lost a game, I drew two games against low rated players and this was the last round where my opponent um, was tied for first and he really wanted to win and I didn't really care much about the result of the game, I just wanted to um, survive and not completely lose my face in the end of this tournament so I did care in a way but not for good reasons. Um, my opponent played uh, e4 and after I played c6, he went into a pen of attack, which I like to play myself as white, but I mostly fear as black. Um, but I have to have something prepared, so, so I just have to play the main line. Um, both sides are developing. And um, in this position, white has a choice uh, of where to put the bishop. And the two main candidates are either bishop d4 as my opponent played or bishop to d3 as I play myself usually and um, they both have similar ideas um, bishop d3 is a bit more straightforwardly trying to put pressure on h7 but um, bishop c4 also has very aggressive attacking intentions in that it's just that in the beginning that white puts the bishop on c4 um, but this is only to force black to capture on c3 at some point and then the bishop will be um, free to go back to d3 now that white's center will be stronger because the pawn would take back to the center and strengthen d4 so that those are both very aggressive moves uh, well I just play the natural castle at this point I'm not yet too worried about the pressure on d5 castle knight c6, rook e1 and here black has to make some decision about how is he gonna try to get the bishop out and um, he... there are problems with playing uh, either bishop d7 he goes bishop d7 then uh, I may lose a pawn to something as silly as sorry, something as silly as this now queen b3 hitting both b7 and d5 so that doesn't work too well uh, if I go b6 then well this is known to weaken the light squares a bit too much on the queen side and I would um, have to suffer after something like this where then white may just play queen a4 and bishop f4 and just start to play on the c file um, because the c6 square now is weakened so those are both known to be not too good so I play what I thought was um, one of the main line moves so I play knight c3 um, with this move I'm first gonna exchange on c3 and then I'm gonna develop my bishop and now white no longer has the option of exchanging on d5 and the C file is kind of closed. But now this uh, allows White to uh, declare his intentions um, as far as the attack on the king goes, and now he's transferring the bishop um, to look h7. I finish development, and now White begins the attack. The idea behind this move h4 is to give White the h5 square for the knight or for other pieces, and it's known it's known to be not too good to take on h4 because then that would just open up the h file say and then just rook e3 and how on earth do you stop this chaos from killing him so um, instead I played um, rook c8 which was not the main move but one of the main moves uh, knight g5 so now white's utilizing that um, square on g5 I took 
And here I made a really bad move. I don't know what I was thinking. I confused a couple of positions in my head because I was somewhat prepared for this line and I just played a really um, weak move that's completely overlooking White's idea. So I thought, well, I need to defend my queen that's being attacked, so why don't I do this with a tempo and um, um, and then regroup. So I thought in this line it's okay for black to play f6 and I completely confused a couple of lines. Instead it's better to play queen d5 and not create the weakness on the king side. So now say if, um, um, white goes queen h5 I have some options. I could play maybe h6, maybe g6. My king side isn't maybe even a 5. My king side isn't as terribly weakened as as in the game. But after I played f6, I thought the bishop would retreat and then I would play queen d7 and cover up e6. Um, but I just completely overlooked queen h5. That just kills me because now I can't play f5. I have to do something about um, h7. And I can't really do h6 either, probably because of bishop h6. So I had to play g6. And now, after this, I can't even take on. Um, I cannot even take on g6 because then I would get devastated again. So I have to play queen d7 now just to transfer my queen to the 7th rank and protect something around here. And at least now both bishops are hanging. So one of them moves. Um, I finally pick up the piece, but he gets a rook back. Now the attack continues. So, so material-wise we're kind of even, but my position is totally messed up. So I'm going to lose the third pawn in, in all this, which is the worst part. I'm going to lose the E pawn, and that's why this is so good for white. And he doesn't even trade queens immediately. He makes my king a bit uh, worse placed. Um, now the queens finally get exchanged and he picks up the third pawn and this position is very bad for um, black but I started to misplay it a little bit and I got a bit of a chance here we we'll both um, improve our pieces and white starts to advance his pawns and he didn't quite advance them in the optimal way and at this point he, for some reasons decided to retreat and he played rook a to e3. It was better to play h5 and just advance the pawns right away. I would be totally toast then and say after knight e7 if I try to do that and that was my idea then he could just start to advance the pawn and I can't take the rook because then the pawn just queens. I can't play knight g6 uh, because the knight is pinned. In the game he, he, he retreated that allowed me to regroup and now my knight is coming to d5. Played another slightly inaccurate move and now I'm getting the d5 square and my pieces are kind of coming out. So h5, I have time to pick up this guy. We know the h pawn gets really far, now I have time to block it. All right. He threatens to advance, I defend h8. Now the pawn advances again. And here I, I made a second huge blunder in the game. Um, I could have held on with rook h8 and the position would be fairly unclear, very unclear in fact. But instead I just totally blundered and I overlooked the main idea that white had. Uh, and I thought I could take on, a, on f4. This um, threatens to take the rook with a check and it seems very strong, but I just overlooked um, a very simple threat. Um, so, what I missed was that white can queen the pawn first, and when I take the queen, then he, tooks, uh, he takes on f6, and now I'm going to lose the rook. I'm going to be down two exchanges to nothing. And I had to resign in this position. Um, 